So, welcome to my presentation. My name is Michael and today I'm going to talk about a Google Cloud service, which is called Google Cloud Run. Um, and I wanted to live up to the hands-on thing and made myself the restriction not having any slides. I have some markdown, markdown um, to give uh, uh, this session a basic structure, but I will uh, only try to show as much uh, as possible as code, as hands-on as possible. Um, my name is Michael Vollmann. Um, I work for a company called Concentric. We do IT consulting, preferably in cloud infrastructures. Um, and uh, yeah, I work as an IT consultant there and um, I'm developing web applications since more than 10 years now. And it's still fun for me. And this year I had an exciting project and this motivates me always to give some talks like today. So what I'm talking about is uh, based on an actual project. And yeah, I give you a quick overview um, how I imagined uh, the structure for today. First, I want to quickly deploy a Hello World. Then I will show a more refined version where I show the deployment with Terraform, basically the same service. And then I have some kind of case study or architecture um, for uh, an application to track c uh containers, which the actual project I was working on is based off. Then I will have a quick summary and check if I have forgotten something, so maybe there will be something new. Uh, and I hope we will uh, have some time for questions at the end. So I will jump into the demo. As I said, Google uh, Cloud Run is a managed service in the Google Cloud. I'm um, now in the Google um, Cloud Console. That's basically the UI uh, for uh, managing uh, Google Cloud projects. Uh, and I want to navigate uh, uh, to the Cloud Run uh, service uh, functionality. It is intended to run containers, like Docker containers. And it's also supposed to be serverless, which I'm not a big fan of the term serverless because it's not like there's still something serving there somewhere. Okay, I don't have to manage it, but it's still there. So, we can, but we can talk about the positive aspects of serverless. They often promise that it's scaling automatically, even down to zero, so that you don't have any cost when it's not used. Uh, they promise also like an interesting payment structure or conditions that allows you to scale from an application that's just starting out uh, to something that is uh, becoming bigger. And one interesting aspect is also that you have to spend much less maintenance effort on it because it's managed. Like you don't have to do operating system updates or patches or whatever. It's less you have to worry about. And so uh, let me quickly deploy as promised the hello world. Um, so I went through the dialogue to create a cloud run service and they have this sample container image that you can select. Uh, one thing you have to consider for cloud run is they expect the containers to be in their own registries. So you, if you want to deploy a custom image uh, you have to push it somehow in uh, the Google Container Registry or Google Artifact Repository uh, Registry. This is something you have to keep in mind. Usually it's not a big problem, but if you already have a container registry somewhere, you might think, oh, this is stupid, I don't like that. There are some public images you can use, but typically you won't find uh, what you're looking for. It's not like Docker Hub. You don't have everything that is in Docker Hub. 
it's just uh, a selection of, uh, of Google images. Uh, um, you can uh, get that are publicly available. So I selected the, the image. Um, I take the name. Let's deploy it somewhere closer in Frankfurt. And one cool aspect about Cloud Run is how they deal with CPUs. They have this, for me, magic uh, that they are able to keep an instance running, but not assign it any CPU. And also that you don't have to pay for it when it's not used. But you still get some fast startup. It's not like completely shutting down the instance. Um, and that's a really interesting option. The alternative would be to always allocate uh, the CPU. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't scale down the instances. This is just looking at one instance, how the CPU allocation works. I can define how many instances the scaling should be in between. And uh, you can scale up to uh, 1,000 instances right now. So um, let me take like 50. And then you can select uh, if you are allowing internal or external traffic, and also uh, how the authorization uh, authentication should work. And now I'm making it completely public and also accessible for everyone. So the service is already deployed. I can show you what this Hello World uh, thing does. It's just a simple web application. Um, and uh, if you want, you could uh, even call it right now if you want to uh, trigger some traffic. <laughs> and let's check some aspects we are now seeing of it. Uh, you have some kind of monitoring dashboard where you can see requests, uh, the instances, for instance, and also some uh, hardware utilizations. Um, it is also integrated um, uh, with the Google Cloud logging. Um, so you get some log entries. What I personally always like to see is like request logging like on HTTP level that you really see what is my application uh, getting right now and you see a uh, get request here, for instance. Okay, that's for the hello world. Um, I'm now doing this, like you might agree that this is not how professional software development uh, typically looks like. You, you typically don't want to click any UIs and deploy stuff. So the alternative for me would be to have like some kind of CI CD pipeline and uh, also to use some tool. Uh, there's a Terraform provider to deploy Google uh, Cloud Run uh, services. Um, Terraform is uh, a popular tool for managing infrastructure as code. So um, I can show you uh, the corresponding GitLab repository. Um, I don't want to go into deep uh, how the pipeline is structured. Like it's uh, basically it uh, validates the structure of the Terraform project. Um, you have a plan stage, like it, it tries, you have a defined uh, state of your infrastructure and it calculates basically what is necessary to achieve the plan state. So this is, has all run automatically. And if I look at the plan for my dev environment, um, I see that it wants to destroy something, which I didn't expect. Let me quickly run the pipeline again. Maybe in the meantime, we can have a look at how a um, 
Cloud Run Service uh, looks as Terraform. Mm -hmm. I typically uh, wrap this in several Terraform modules, but I don't want to de uh, go too deep into the Terraform project right now. But these are the Google Cloud provider resources for Terraform. And this huge block here you are seeing is the actual service. So you're seeing more or less the same thing you have uh, seen before uh, in the UI. There are some additional stuff I'm doing here. Um, I'm giving it a service account, uh, which is um, a way f um, to do uh, auth in, in Google Cloud, I, because I also want to deploy um, a scheduler for it um, that allows me to trigger it in a different way. Uh, so my, in addition to the Seller World service, I also um, um, have a scheduler job defined, uh, which uses the same service account uh, as for the cloud run. This is not strictly necessary, but I'm assigning to this uh, service account a special uh, role the, the, um, that allows um, the service account to actually call um, the cloud run service because as I have configured it, um, the service is not uh, publicly uh, accessible anymore. Let me see in the meantime how far my Terraform pipeline has come and check the dev plan again. And now we have 13 resources to add as I expected it. Then let's apply this. This is a manual step. And let's check what's happening uh, in the Google Cloud. Now it will take a time until uh, the pipeline runs through. I also to enable um, the Terraform uh, to, uh, changes to be applied, I also use a service account. So I have a dedicated uh, service account, which is uh, um, in GitLab uh, as an, there's like a private uh, service account access key that enables you uh, um, to do these uh, operations. And uh, that's how the connection between GitLab and uh, the Google Cloud works. Yeah, I'm just using the, the public GitLab right now. That's why it took quite a long time to actually get a runner. But the actual deployment shouldn't take that long. So this is the new service I deployed. And if I try to open this one, uh, it says forbidden. Uh, and I like to show you the, the scheduler integration uh, I mentioned. Like this is some kind of uh, cron job that is uh, executed on a uh, basically uh, this frequency de defined here. And, but I can also run it manu manually. And if I check the logs for um, uh, the schedule, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the view logs is kind of hidden. 
I just wanted to sh want to show you that I actually got a positive response. Uh, Yeah, this what uh, what we are seeing uh, on the skill UI, it didn't fail, so it, it at least uh, did get a successful response. Let's check the the run side again. No. There we should also now see um, that the scheduler call happened. Yeah, this was my attempt to access it without uh, credentials, and this is the cloud scheduler part. And I guess we should now uh, go through the... I, I want to show you a more complex example. I don't have um, any code for it, um, but I have a, a diagram for it. How a, uh, this is not the actual project I was working on, but it's highly inspired by it. Um, like when it comes to uh, C freight container tracking, one of the most important aspects is when does your container arrive and when has it actually arrived. And I guess you have all experienced uh, supply chain issues in the recent past, as my customer did and they wanted to have more transparency. And so they had this SCM, the supply chain management system, but they didn't have any details about where the containers were. They were completely in the dark. Uh, and so they wanted to connect like a uh, tracking API. There are actually APIs you can use uh, for external providers, you give them like a container ID, that's that's a uh, standard container number, uh, or a ship, uh, or several other identifiers, and they tell you where this container is right now and when it is expected to arrive. So the idea was uh, to make this more transparent. And as a UI, um, I wanted to have some kind of standardized dashboard and I was thinking, okay, from operating, I know Grafana is it's, it's, it's standard software. I didn't want to develop anything from the scratch. So my idea was to use Grafana as a monitoring dashboard basically for these containers or shipments. Um, and that was basically the, the UI for the internal employees, or employees that were interested in the containers. They even uh, could set up alerts on, on uh, the things they are seeing in container, uh, in Grafana. And in the middle is like kind of shipment management service that gets for, uh, via PubSub, this is some messaging this system, uh, just the details about what was ordered and uh, the, the container number, for instance, like the, the relevant details for a given shipment. This service is in the middle, this shipment service, I call it, is just there to, to store the shipments basically in a database. And there's another, the more interesting service, the tracking one. This, this one basically takes the containers and maps it uh, using uh, the external API with the um, expected and actual arrival dates of a container. And so the, the three ones in the middle, Grafana, the shipment service and the tracking service are all running in, in Cloud Run. You've already seen uh, with the Hello service, the integration with Cloud Scheduler, because this external API, it's, I assume it's synchronous. So we wanted to have some kind of trigger. Yeah, we want updates every hour, for instance. And that's what the scheduler does. And with PubSub, we have a loose uh, integration uh, uh, to the SCM. And as a 
Um, I'm not saying this is a good architecture, actually. If you look at it, uh, you see like everything pointing to the same database. This might not be the best solution in the world. But I just wanted something to show you how you can actually integrate uh, cloud run services in a more complex environment. Um, and yeah. Also, typically what you're doing in clouds uh, is you want to have things running private, like in a private network. It's typically called like a, a, a private virtual cloud VPC. And what you have to consider for uh, Cloud Run is you can't put it in a, a VPC, um, but you can use connectors uh, to such private uh, networks, which uh, is, for instance, uh, could be done for uh, the shipment database that this is running in a VPC and the cloud run services all have a connector uh, to access it. Okay, then let me check what is left in the summary. So I've talked about auto scaling and that Cloud Run is able to scale to zero, that the, the payment model can be quite interesting with pay as you go, that it has less maintenance effort. And for me, when I, uh, I had this uh, mindset that I liked Kubernetes when I started this project and that I will, it was my preferred deployment uh, platform or runtime environment. And so my mindset was, yeah, is it a lightweight Kubernetes? And now I'm saying, no, it's more like a cloud function or AWS uh, Lambda with containers. That's more like it because it's actually really driven by requests typically. Um, it's, it's not like, uh, it's, a com uh, it's a different mindset to have something running all the time or just on a neat basis. I've also talked about that you have to use the Google registries uh, for your images. Um, I've mentioned Terraform and uh, the Cloud Console I've shown, but I haven't mentioned uh, gCloud, that's an alternative. Um, it's like a command line tool for the Google Cloud. Uh, you could use it as a Terraform alternative if you don't like uh, Terraform. Um, on a product level, um, like in AWS, I guess Fargate would be the closest uh, to Cloud Run, and in Azure, uh, Azure Container Instances. I've also talked about this CPU allocation, and if you are having cold starts. Um, for a service, this means like an instance is not ready and needs to be start up. That takes usually longer. That's why I would recommend um, in many cases that you should have something that starts fast. Um, so m maybe if you're in a Java world, maybe something with Graal uh, VM to really have fast code starts. Um, for logging, I can also recommend like console logging, uh, structured in a JSON format, because it, it integrates well. If you're logging to the console, everything you log in the console in, in the Google Cloud runs so is automatically catched up by caught up um, by uh, Google Cloud logging. And if you're using structured logging, uh, like expected uh, from the Google Cloud, the expected format. You can even do like cool stuff and show the duration of, of a request uh, in in uh, in the UI really well integrated. Um, yeah. For me, the main advantages are the scalability, the maintenance, um, and all that it uses containers. Like you can, for instance, use existing images like the Grafana uh, image. You don't have to uh, code everything. You can use existing stuff. The tooling is more standardized with containers. And in theory, you could also use more languages and, and runtime environments. But actually, 
since you are in the Google Cloud, it's safe to assume you want to use other Google Cloud services. So probably you're still limited what uh, the Google Software Development Kit uh, offers as languages. Yeah, and compared to cloud functions, uh, one instance can also handle multiple uh, requests. Um, yeah. This might already be outdated. Like, um, there is a maximum timeout right now for a request, which is one hour. So, which are, uh, that's why I would say it's not suitable for long running stuff. But there are um, now um, cloud run jobs. I haven't tried these, so I cannot talk about these, but these might be suitable for long running tasks. You're also using something in the Google Cloud, so you could argue, oh, this is a vendor login. I don't want this. I want to switch clouds whenever it gets expensive. You could argue against it. Yeah, okay, it's container, so it uh, should still be easy to switch. And under the hood, Google Cloud Run uses Knative, uh, which is something you can run uh, in Kubernetes. So if you like the serverless uh, runtime, uh, you can uh, still um, you extract basically the Knative stuff uh, and deploy it uh, to Kubernetes. In my opinion, no, um, I can uh, recommend you as a further reading uh, the Cloud Run frequently asked questions. And also there's a good tutorial. Uh, you will find it from Google, how to uh, deploy Grafana. And if you want to, uh, a longer version of this talk, I will also be at the JCon, uh, JCon online in September this year. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email and I will happily send you the code. But I'm afraid I exceeded the time I planned for questions, but I will promise you I will be uh, around if if you wait uh, behind the door, I will be available for questions. So <laughs> thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.